What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today, like my man Steve Harvey done say. It's my man H. Mac, Harry Mac. This dude is incredible. One of the best freestylers I've seen uh, on the interwebs. You need to check out Harry Mac, Harry Mac Official. H. Mac, his freestyles are all over YouTube, on TikTok, on Twitter. Um, I think he's so brilliant, so good at his at his craft, his skill, uh, and he's super fun to watch and a very cool dude. Go check him out. He's jumping around the country. He's still doing shows and touring and doing his thing. I'm done touring. I'm not doing any of that, hopefully, until we shoot a special, uh, but I'll keep you posted on all of that jazz. Enough rambling from your boy. Like, subscribe, share this with people. Please leave a comment for the algorithm as we were. We really appreciate you, man. I really do. I love doing this show. I love bringing it to you every week. We haven't missed in four years now almost. So thank you so much for watching. Enough rambling from your boy. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today as I crack a Blueberry Mountain Valley. It's Harry Mack. Give it up for Harry Mack at home. Clap at your computer or in your car, wherever you are. Thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Huge, so good to be here. Huge that you came. Look, yes. I've followed you on the interweb, on right. the um, on the internet yes. for a while now, and I, ha I have an abundant of... I was like, should I research a lot? No, but I was like, I just want to learn organically about you. Hell yeah. I'm a hip-hop kid. Yes. I grew up loving hip-hop. We're a little bit age difference. Right. But we're close enough where I think we have the overlap because you're 30, what'd you say? 32. Yeah, so, and I'm almost 40, so it's like, I think we still have... We'll still have some touches. Where yeah, are you from? We're in the same pocket. Uh, I'm from Portland, Oregon. Okay. Originally. Yeah, PDX. born and raised. Yes, sir. PDX. 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 The PNW, as they say. That I was just correct. up there, by the way. Sketchy. A little sketchy. Yeah, especially Not gonna right lie. now. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. right now. I think COVID really, uh, you know, hit Portland hard. Yeah. And so there's a lot of homelessness. There's a lot of kind of homeless encampments throughout needles. the city. Needles. Needles. Yeah. A lot of needles. Yeah. Not space needles. When you do go to <laughs> Seattle, check out the space needles. Skip over the needles on the way. We took the train. Right. Me and my, me and the guy that that um that comes and does stand up with me. Yeah. We took the train. Okay. We were gonna we were gonna get a car to to Seattle from Portland. Yeah. And he was like, "We should take a train." I was like, "That could be dope." The Amtrak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was nice. like, "That could be dope. Why not?" Yeah. You yeah. know, that's fine. I right. like I like that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Bad idea, because like getting there was sketchy. It was it's in a, such a sketch neighborhood, right? And then there was it literally legit, legitimately walked over needles, and I was like, "This is yeah." Nope, you know, me, me and, a, and a friend actually, when I was in college, because um, I came down here to go to go to college. That's what brought me down to L.A. What are we talking? UCLA, uh, USC, USC, USC. God bless, smart yes. kid, smart yes. kid. Me? Yeah, you well, must be. I don't know. I was a music major. I was okay. a jazz oh, studies oh, major. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, dumb Playing guy. the drums. Dumb guy, good school. Yeah, dumb guy, good, good school. No, exactly. Dumb, dumb <laughs> exactly. Dude, I went to Arizona State. I'm dumb guy, bad school. Oh, there you go. Hey, so you at know. least you did one of the two correctly. Right, right. Yeah, I was trying, you know, 50% there. Yeah. Uh, we romanticized the idea of taking the Amtrak up from LA to Portland. We were both from Portland, me and my sure. friend. And we thought that this was going to be the coolest fucking thing. Like in our heads, it seemed like such a romantic thing to do. You yeah. know, just the, the uh, not like between me and him romantic, but just <laughs> romantic in the sense of, man, we'll be. Hey, man, you do you. <laughs> Whatever you and your friends need to do to like get by. Whatever uh, makes you feel love in your heart. Yes. It's you and your homie on the train having yes. a nice romantic, you know, <laughs> sip of tea overlooking the ocean. That's cool too, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's not, it's, it could be a lot worse, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, I, I mean, it was terrible. Like we were miserable. After about eight hours when we realized that we were just going to be blind blasted with ac and the amtrak is kind of just like a bus it's a bus yeah it's, it's a, just it's a bus, bus on rails we thought it was going to be like this whole train experience i don't know we, we magnified it in our minds to be you thought it was going to be thing. like the midnight express yes you know where tom hanks was going to come out and give you hot cocoa and you were going to end up at the north pole exactly nah, you yeah. ended up in, in like barstow and shit and yeah you're yeah. just yeah you're on a bus people are getting on for one or two stops for their like morning commute looking yeah it's angry. a bummer yeah, yeah. it's we, not we, as we, nice as you think it's going to be no and we were like oh there's a bar on there that's dope yeah, but the, it's not a bar like we, I, I pictured no. like a real bar, like no. a wooden bar. It's like no. a little mini fridge down it's there. Seven Eleven. Yeah, it's 7 a little Seven Eleven on a train. And this like angry guy that's like not happy to help you like take Dude, your money and give they're you, like, never happy. No, they're never happy. Yeah, because I take the train down to San Diego. I refuse to drive from L.A. because it's 
fuck that. It's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting no matter which way you're going, people in LA know. No matter if you're going down to San Diego or coming back, there is zero, and I mean zero time of day where it's good. It doesn't right. matter. Something about that gap is so shit. It's shit. So I take the train. And every time that dude, even if you're like, hey, man, how are you? He's like, what do you want? Right. They don't, they fucking hate you. They hate that yeah. gig. They are not happy ever. So no. you took the, so you took the train from, uh, did you ever make it to do the LA to Portland or no? Yeah, we did the whole thing. Yeah, we yeah, did the whole thing. Yeah, and it was but a it was I mean, we were freezing. Like, that's what I remember was just, you know how AC, I mean, for me anyway, AC starts to make you feel weird after yeah. a certain amount of time when you're just sort of in an enclosed space with AC yeah. for too long. You so can't get up and just, leave. Yeah, and they like, have little blankets, but they're terrible little tiny blankets. Are you, that, what, those COVID blankets? No chance, no chance. <laughs> the smallpox blankets they have left over? No, 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 I'm not touching Amtrak blankets. And they're like, we disinfected them. Oh. On the plane, I think about that sometimes with the pillows and the blankets and all like, Right. They, they clean them. You're like, nah. Do they though? Right, do right. they? When? When are they cleaning all that stuff? I don't buy. I don't Where's buy the that they're cleaning anything. You know? Yeah, nah. Where are the laundry? Machines? They take it outside and do the thing, like do this thing, you know, like <laughs> right. your they mom did to out. the rug. Yeah, they shake, shake the rug and put it back. Right. Um. But uh, but before we go further, yes. because I'll get on too many tangents. That's what my brain does. Right. Me too. You, uh, I found you via the web. Yes. I can't. I don't even know how long ago, but I've been keeping up with your stuff for a while because I think. For people that don't know, you need to check him out right now. And we'll put links in the description so people can see if they don't know you. But I Thank think you. you're quite known on the interwebs. Uh, yes. Your freestyle acumen yes. is, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to find a good adjective. It's its its w remarkably impressive. Your ability, you. but it's real freestyling, right? Right, Which is something that we grew up with, that I grew up with, which was actually off the top. Yes. Instead of, look, everyone has some pre-written stuff. Everyone knows how their tags come into play. Same thing in yeah. stand-up. That's yeah. what we share of this, like, that's why I think musicians and stand-ups kind of get along a little bit because they go, right. I see what they do. And their skill level is something I don't know, but I see how they do certain things. It's almost like watching someone good at chess. Yeah. You're like, I'm not, I don't, I don't know how we got to that move, but I understand what this means. You I know? understand applying different patterns to different situations totally. and seeing how things can be yes. used and morphed to apply. And you do that 100%. pretty heavily. So you, yeah. so give me the, from start, did you, were you, have you been making music for years and years? What's the yeah. deal? Yeah. I've been a musician pretty much my whole life. You know, like when I was a baby, I was playing rhythms on the high chair tray and stuff like that. Yeah. I was always musical. Is your you dad know? just giving you a beat and stuff? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess so. Is, yeah. 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 You know, it's funny. My immediate family members are not actually musicians themselves, but, but big fans of uh, music. My dad's like a huge jazz head and uh, my mom's really into like folk music and things like that. So I was exposed to a lot of music when I was young. I started playing the violin when I was seven. Uh, I started playing the drums when I was 10 Damn. and that's around the time when I first started writing my first rhymes and I started trying to figure out how to, how to freestyle off top or improvise as a yes. rapper around that time, 11, 12 years old. Damn. So, uh, yeah, I've been doing it forever. So you're doing it in high school. Yep. Then you were doing it in college. Yes, sir. And then when you got out of USC, yeah. you, you were like, you know, what was the impetus to, to take it to the streets to do those man on the street videos that people should watch if they haven't seen, you know, what you'll do essentially is go up to a, a usually a small group of friends. Right ask him for a word or ask him to throw you words yep you know and you'll continue to freestyle through them kind of coming and going like i've seen yep. videos where people kind of like dip right and then new people come in yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's kind of i mean that's that's probably the most impressive thing that i saw is i was like man this motherfucker is just he, he keeps going right regardless of how the scenario changes which i think a lot of people would be adverse to because they're like it's not going to look clean or smooth or cut together right but right how did how did this whole thing start yeah yeah no it's funny what you meant a lot of times you just need a group to kind of start the energy and get the energy flowing yes and then it sort of takes on a life of its own people passing by will latch on because they see something cool happening and they want to check it out and right. it sort of evolves and changes and now our feature presentation all right so let me get like a random word to inspire my freestyle something challenging um spontaneous Lincoln Memorial. Lincoln Memorial, that makes yeah. sense. All right, all right. Spontaneous Lincoln Memorial. Leg work. Leg work, hell yeah. All right, dope. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Let's get it. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spit up the top till my brain just bust. All of my lyrics are spontaneous. I am the one they excited about. Do it off top, I don't write it Whoa. out. Yeah, kill it off top on my own and my flow is spontaneous. I'm in the moment. Uh, everyone loving my flow. I got my man dancing and yelling out, Whoa, uh, hey, man. I grab the mic, let's do this. I told my man I got my own beats. So you speak you're gonna have to mute this. Hey, man, I don't no flaws. Uh, I'ma kill the game, I'm the cause. Got these other MCs need guards. He was like, hold up, wait a minute, press pause. 
Whoa. 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 My music pops like a camel, uh, my shit is off of the handle, shout out to my girl who be rocking the camo, uh, man, I've been coming right though, peace to my fans, I'm supporting you, had to come through with the ill freestyles in front of the Lincoln Memorial, yo, yeah, 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 yeah. what is you thinking, fitting so fast that you miss if you blink it, every time that I rhyme on the track, I be keeping it honest, I'm feeling like Lincoln, yeah, y'all know I rap for the people who be chilling in the residential, but when it come to rhymes off top, I'm advanced, I'm like Lincoln, my flow is presidential, this uh -huh. man coming up the top, getting respect, and he might that he clutches, that's what he rests, uh, shout out to my man in the white kicks, in the black jeans, in the beat that huh, Every time I rhyme, I make your head hurt My man is hitting up the gym and doing leg work Hey, Spence, my lyrics sounding hot They doing leg work, cause when I bust, they gotta squat It's Sage Spence, I'm off the top Coming through to do my thing To every single lyric they claim Shout out to my man, cause he's rapping the Kings Hey, Spence, man, he got it on his cap Y'all know they really get fucked with that My man is his king Top of your bucket hat, hey. but this is the truth. Hey. My people be loving the sound. Hey. If this is a hat for a king, it's not a bucket hat, this is a crown. Hey, Jack, I'm gonna break it down, put my piece real quick. Y'all know I'm blowing up the head. Hey. And I know you got the tiger stripes, hey. but I never seen the tiger that's red. Hey. Hey. Yo, I'm gonna break it down. Coming up the top with the blood I can't fuck with. Hey. Rappers trying to dismack, but honestly, it's just more tears in the bucket. Hey. Yeah. Way too nice with my clothes. Hey, yo, this dog, it got a pumpkin for a nose. Hey. Hey. Is scary. My name is Harry. Harry. So to a bear, they go compare me. Hey. I kill it when I'm spilling off the top of the team. Every time I'm rhyming, I be crushing the scene. Hey. H-Mack shining kinda like high beams. Like the color of your sweatpants, I'ma get green. Hey. H-Mack coming up the top. Hey. And you'll know that they couldn't really diss, bro. Hey. Let me see what it says on your shirt. Shout out to man, no official. Hey. H-Mack, I'm about to rap for the brand. <laughs> Crush it everywhere that I stand. I kick the passionate raps. I need a reactions like that. Hey. I'ma crush the mic in the craziest way. Shouts my peeps. Hey. DC, thanks for making my day. <laughs> Much love, y'all. I had a rap group all through all through high school. I had various groups in college. Graduated from college with a jazz studies degree as a drummer, and kind right. of felt like I kind of fell under that whole thing of like, well, my degree says I'm a jazz drummer, so I think I'm supposed to try to figure out how to make this work, you know? Right. And I love jazz. I still do, and and uh, loved playing the drums. I still love playing when I have the opportunity to play, which is less now, but I was just, you know, grinding it out, trying to gig and, and, uh, play as a jazz drummer in LA and just scraping by, um, are there jazz gigs in LA? Yeah, there are gigs, there are gigs, but, uh, it's really, really tough for like 99% of the people doing it. Yeah. I mean, you just have to be so incredibly undeniably good. What circuit are we talking about? Like, is it like bars? Is yeah. it bars, restaurants, yeah. uh, corporate events, weddings, all that kind of Oof. stuff, but it's a lot of rough. I mean, for me anyway, it was a lot of like, you know, $50 bar gig where you're crammed in a corner and you're being told to play quieter all the time. And, you know, you're disturbing the guests, you know, right. that kind of thing. And it can be really tough to break out of that. I have friends who are really successful in the jazz world now and, and shout out to them because I know it's, it's a really tough grind for a long time. Um, but that's what I was doing. And then meanwhile, you know, I'm obsessed with hip hop and obsessed with freestyling and have been since, like I said, back when I was 10. And so I'm kind of doing the two things parallel. Um, but uh, I think because of some of my own securities about kind of like stepping out front and being the front person and, you know, being a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> it just seemed like, man, I don't know. I, I can't necessarily see the path to that. It felt too abstract. Sure. And so I was really fortunate. I have a, a friend who um, is a great jazz piano player and composer, and he kind of tricked me into starting the whole YouTube thing by asking me to freestyle over his beat uh, for a YouTube video oh, on his shit. channel. Who's this dude? Shout out. Uh, his name's Jacob Mann. Shout out to Jacob Mann. Jacob Mann. You started this revolution. Yeah, yes. Good or bad, it's all right. your fault. Everything that happens from this moment forward is actually Jacob Mann's responsibility, so I can't take any responsibility <laughs> for any of it. You Good say or that bad. when you're on the stand and you're like, Your Honor, Jacob Mann. <laughs> He started all this bullshit. Yeah. If it wasn't for him, I'd still be terrified to show my music to anyone. Right. I'd still be trapped so in my own bedroom. He uploaded, and then this kind of ho this whole thing started. Yeah, yeah. We did a little video of me driving uh, his car down Sunset Boulevard. I drove his car because I didn't have an aux cord. And uh, we plugged his beat in. I rapped about all the changing scenery down Sunset Boulevard. Because the whole thing for me is kind of trying to showcase that it's truly improvised. Right. So I'm drawing in random street signs and things that are happening all around us. And uh, I didn't think anything of it. It was a favor to him. You right. know, I think he uh, tried to Venmo me like 50 bucks and I said, no, don't do that. That's ridiculous. We got lunch afterwards. I forgot about it. And then I woke up from a nap like about a week later and my roommate at the time said, yo, you're going viral right now. 
And it turns out that little video was upvoted to number one on Reddit videos yeah. and got like 100,000 views overnight or something like that. Wow. And at that time, for me, I mean, I was just like, that's fucking incredible. That is incredible. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just, it was just like, I couldn't fathom it. You know, I remember the night that that was happening, I was like scrolling, refreshing the view count and seeing it go up by like, you know, a couple hundred at a time or something like that. And but, that's like, a, but that is amazing. That first yeah. feeling is wild. Yeah. What were you doing to make money in the meantime? Uh, gigging and teaching drum lessons. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Were, you, were, were you doing okay then, or were you still kind of? Uh, Dude, I, was, I mean, I was struggling. I, I had yeah. zero overhead. You know, yeah. I, mean, I was like exactly covering my expenses barely, right. and that's it. That's good though. At least you didn't have. You know what I mean? You didn't have like a wife and kids that you were like, "I'm drowning here. Right, I might need right, to right. go back to Portland." Yeah, like I could afford to live that way, and at the time it didn't seem that crazy. I mean, it wasn't like this horrible experience or anything. You know, yeah. I was still like you know, life was getting okay. Drunk with my friends and stuff, and smoking right. weed and shit, and like felt like I was having a cool life and I was playing music, you know, right. and I was supporting myself playing music. And, and so I always felt really, really grateful about that part. You know, um, before that I had to like work a call center job and stuff like that. And that's when it's really, really Tell tough. me about that. What's up with the call center job? Dude, I, I did that shit. You I did? did? Well, I did a, I did a, I did a sales, I did a sales gig where we cold called. So it was kind yeah. of like the same idea of just like, I was a fucking cog in a machine. What were you, what were you selling? I was selling window washing, power washing, air duct cleaning, and I was good. God damn. I was good, dude. I could sell you on fuck. I could sell you that shit right away. I would suck. You know, I'd use bait, bait, bait stuff. Easy sure. bait techniques where they teach you like, you know, hey, Mr. Samuelson, you know, your neighbor just got air duct cleaning. I'm not interested. It's like, oh, that's no big deal. We just wanted to tell you we're going to be there. And if we're making too much noise, come over and tell us wow. to, you know what I mean? Like, it's we just, good. we're not trying to work on your house. I just want to let you know sometimes it gets loud. Yeah. Because when we clean out these pipes, this thing that happens is typically we have to like fix some of them or undo them and they right. kind of clang around and people have complained. So I just, we don't want to bother you. And wow. immediately, Someone will come over. That's well, one genius, of the workers man. are there, and it's an easy. Ba- it, it, but all that stuff That's was, amazing. yeah, it was like skill set stuff that I learned when I was in. I was in high school when I did this shit. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I was beating out like people that were like in their thirties selling. Amazing, yeah, I was selling and more. And it's, it's so helpful, right? Like right. I, I hate on the call center job so much. Yeah. But like my girl makes fun of me because just as much as I'll be like, oh, that was miserable. So many moments in my life now, I'm like, yeah, I learned how to do that from the call center. Yeah, skills, technique. Yeah. You, the people skills you learned or the, or the, the idea of like, how to sell things or how to really like really work and talk to people because we weren't scamming anybody we were selling a real service right but it was like how do you want how do you make them get interested in your service yeah which is what you are right you're selling you 100 percent. so now you're selling you to the world live so you're like how can i sell me in a way that's like i have something to give you that you might want right but you need i need to get to a place where you go what is this what is this thing exactly do you know what i mean because exactly. how many people also go like what's this rap guy doing what is he doing right all the time. Yeah. And like it's it's basically the same as cold calling when I'm out there doing the man on the street stuff like you're talking about. You it's know, tough, I'm, right? I'm just walking up to strangers fully exposed to rejection. Right. I mean, that was one of the biggest things I learned from the call center is like it's okay to uh, you know, so what? Like people are gonna shit on you. Sure. Uh, all right. Yeah. So, fine. Well strap you know? in, that's only gonna get worse. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. The more the more I'm success sure. you get, the more like, fuck this guy. <laughs> this yeah. guy sucks and I don't like his rap. Exactly. That, that's the that's the thing that happens naturally with the growth, that growth ratio of, you know, if 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 you're on a small level of a little bit of fame or success right. and 1% of them sh- hate you, right. well, that's a small number. Right. But when you're, you know, when you're getting 50 million views on YouTube, yeah, it goes up and up and up. Yeah, 1% it's, of the 50 million views, that's a lot of people. It's a lot of people, lot of man. People and I'm not and good yeah. at math, but we know what, you guys know what it is right. at home. <laughs> right. No, so, right. so, so, I, I, there's so many things I want to ask you as I keep jumping in my mind. What were the names of the hip hop groups that you start, like, what was it in high school or college? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had yeah. a crew? Uh, what was the yeah, crew? Yeah, we had a crew. So, First crew was in sixth grade, me and my boy Brady. Sixth grade? Sixth grade, yeah. Wow. We have a record, man, from sixth grade, like a little EP we made. Is it out somewhere? No, no, no. Put that shit up on Spotify. It's, no. Come on, man. No, no, no. Put it on Spotify. Why are you too scared? It's on Google Drive, you know. It gets shared among friends Put and that thing on the internet. <laughs> I've leaked What's, a little what, bit of a track. You I've did? A little, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was called Brain Vacation. The name of the song. For a sixth grader, that's pretty creative. You know what, man? I listened to it. It's hilarious because it's like prepubescent, you know, me rhyming and stuff. It sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks, like this super high-pitched voice rapping. And like, what the fuck was I rapping about? It was like vocab words from class and like intricate sounding shit. I used to rap really, really fast. Topographical. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Geographical. (laughs) Clouds clouds are fantastical. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. When you just, you're like cumulus. (laughs) Right, (laughs) right. Zero life experience, but trying Mm -hmm. to make something that sounds like densely lyrical and cool, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that, you know, the the faster you rap, the better you were. You know, that to me was just like a linear equation. So I would try to 
rap really fast sure. and all that type of type of stuff. But I listen to it now and it makes me feel uh it, it makes me smile and it makes me feel like damn, this is a unique um phase of of creativity, you know, when you're right. fucking 11. And it's like I can't remember how it felt to be 11. You, you know, like it's gone. I can't remember how that actually felt. Like I have memories from that age range sure but i don't remember what it was like to see through those eyes and like experience the world as an 11 year old but if i listen to that music it's like a little glimpse back into sort of what that world was it's see hilarious. that's cool man that's like <laughs> a little time capsule it is yeah, what yeah, was yeah. the name of the crew you and brady state of mind state of mind state of mind and you're 11 <laughs> brady came up with it yeah brady came up with it he just uh, thought you... it sounded cool i went with it in here we pour whiskey Hey guys, I've talked about Squarespace on this show many a times, and what I was trying to do was see if you could create a website with Squarespace um, and uh, showcase your work on how you did it on your own. I've told you this before, Squarespace has incredible templates that you can use, but you can also go on your own and go rogue. Uh, This time, the crew over here picked Jordan Creates. Look at this guy, Jordan Schatzberg. This is the website by jordancreates.me. He's got his own vibe over there, and look, I appreciate Jordan. If you're creating sites through Squarespace, it means a lot to me because I got to tell you, they do so much stuff. They have a video studio. You can create videos on there, edit them, put them up. You can do email campaigns to your fans or your followers or your confidants. Uh, Squarespace is a place to create your own website, whether you're selling something, designing something. Um, And again, they have these real-time analytics that are incredible. You can gain powerful insights into who's visiting your site and how uh, they're interacting with your content, how in-depth that website analytics goes as deep as you need it to be. They got page views, traffic sources, time on site, uh, most read content, audience geography, and much, much more. They got connected all the social media accounts. They bring them into one little place. They got blogging tools, powerful blogging tools to uh, share stories, photos, videos, and updates, and whatever it is that you may need. I really love it because they have uh, award-winning customer support. Um, They got Squarespace scheduling where your clients can quickly view your availability, book you with reservations. They make this so easy whether you're a massage therapist or an artist, a bodybuilder, uh, you're a comedian, me, selling something. That's how we created our site. They've got great SEO tools on there, um, that online store if you've got one, you're selling something with a suite of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results, making sure that people are looking for you, they can find you easily. Uh, shout out uh, to my boy, Jordan, and uh, go check out his website there. Send in more websites uh, to our email, amasantinofan at gmail.com. Maybe we'll host your website on this show. Uh, and thank you to Squarespace. Squarespace, head over there right now. Squarespace.com slash whiskey. Squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use offer code whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hey, guys, I've talked about BetterHelp on this show many a times. I am a big proponent of getting uh, help with your mental health. I think it is extremely uh, important to speak with someone about stuff. Otherwise, you let it build up and bubble up. And then you have a freak out in public at a local coffee shop, and you throw coffee on somebody and ends you in a local county jail for six weeks, (laughs) which we're trying to get out of. But let me tell you something. Mental health is very important to take care of. It's uh, just as important as your body's health. And uh, if you're not taking care of that, I'm telling you, it's 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 going to haunt you forever. And how we uh, take care of our minds affects how we, you know, operate in our everyday daily life. I think talking about some, talking to someone about what's going on in your life is important than just letting it sit for no reason. And BetterHelp, that's online therapy that offers uh, video phone and even live chat uh, therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Um, these are licensed therapists. You can be matched in under 48 hours, and it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. In-person therapy does not work for me. It works for somebody. I just don't like going to a place. I'd rather sit in the comfort of my home um, and chat with someone. I think that's way easier in my bedroom or, like I say, my bathtub. Have I done it before in the bathtub? Yeah, I've done it in the bathtub. That's not that big of a deal. I want to talk to somebody. I'm comfy in the tub-tub. Uh, but BetterHelp is great. Please use it. If you need help, try it. You know, what's what's what do you got to lose? You know, you don't want to lose your mind, so what do you got to lose? With BetterHelp, uh, they can help you get to where you need to be or want to be. Our listeners are going to get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash whiskey. BetterHelp.com slash whiskey. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash whiskey. Ginger. I like gingers. It's a state of mind, man. You're state like, of mind. State yeah, of mind. For, for, you're like, this is... We are promoting exactly who we are right now. We're in a specific state of mind. And by the way, it couldn't change anymore. When you're like 11, within six months, you're a completely different person. Yeah, 100%, your balls bro. drop and you start yeah. seeing, you're like tits? Yeah. Your whole, everything, your psyche <laughs> right. changes. But your state of mind at the time was uh, 
That's what it, it was. It was, it was relatively innocent, you know, and yeah. rapidly changing. Uh, yeah, what but was my, the second crew? So my rap name, though, at that time was hilariously corny. MC Wonder. MC S- Wonder. Spelled. W-U-N. Wonder. D-U-R. Wonder. 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 <laughs> Wonder. Like you're Canadian or something. Exactly. Wonder. <laughs> Wonder boys up there, eh? Oh, exactly. yeah, MC Wonder. He's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so what, and what was Brady's name? He, I think he went by um, Shortcut. At the time? Oh, bro. Shortcut's actually a really good name. Yeah. yeah Shortcut yeah, yeah. is dope. I think it's claimed, though. I'm is pretty he sure short? A is he a tiny guy? He was short. Yeah. yeah so Shortcut's short. great. Yeah, no, it was a good name. I think that's name. smooth. Better than name. Wonder. I got to be honest with you. That's Wonder terrible. was a horrible name. It was a yeah. horrible name, man. Did you, would you, did, were you ever into, in your, I mean, is this maybe past your time, but did you got, were you guys ever into tagging and shit? And did you go tag your shit or no? I had some homies that were into it, you know? Yeah. Um, you didn't get into it. No, I wasn't. I was no good. You don't seem like a bad boy. I was a rule follower, man. I was a good fucking kid. Yeah, I could tell you were a good kid. You didn't fuck up almost ever. <laughs> I mean, occasionally, but uh, I, I rarely got caught fucking up. My reputation was very clean, you know? Squeaky. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, what's, well, like, what's the worst thing that you did as a kid? Um, I'm trying to think. Like, did you steal or did you do some dumb we, yeah, shit Yeah, yeah, like yeah. We, we went through a phase, you know, like fifth grade or whatever. Um, we would, like, bring Sharpies into the fucking bathroom and write shit on the stall, sure. write shit on the wall, you know. Uh, I remember one time in fifth grade, there was this, like, competition that was happening in the class where it was, like, you'd get rewarded for doing good things or whatever. With, you know, I can't remember. There were all these various challenges, but you would get rewarded with this currency, like, with this printed money. Uh. You know, fake money, like our own little class currency. Sure. And uh, so first, me and my friend Manny, shout out to Manny, we were like, dude, we got to, like, you know, photocopy this money like we got to make counterfeit bills yes bro and i had a scanner which at the time was like kind of crazy it was like you know if you had a cd burner that was next level and huge and and, uh, if you had a scanner same thing so um but it was only one-sided so i scanned the front of the bill and i scanned the back of the bill and then we would glue them together and we created little (laughs) counterfeit bills that like didn't have the same feel they were like thicker and weird and the edges were exposed but it it worked we used a couple we circulated a couple of them back into the system and uh and then one day we found the actual bundle of bills like the the teacher like the bank we found the bank oh, it was yeah. just it was just bundled up in a rubber band found that bag. underneath yeah we found yeah. the bag and we took from it a large a large amount you know Did you feel bad about it uh at the time no i felt very excited by it you no, know today uh oh, today yeah do you want to apologize mean, to the teacher go ahead and look in that camera go ahead and apologize Who no was you it? know what i think if i could talk to the teacher i think you should have hit it better you know <laughs> it wasn't that hard to find we're little kids crawling around on the floor and yeah. it was under like uh like how you have a bar card here it was basically like under something like that you right know, just on foolish the floor. Teacher. we what, found it accidentally what's the teacher's name do you remember I, I i don't remember see i don't remember either when people talk to me they're like do you remember i don't remember any of my teachers and i mean this <laughs> I remember, I, I'm dead serious. Wow. Fifth grade, um, fifth grade, I should remember because my, my, my best friend Sean always reminds me because I had to stay in for recess every day because he would make me stay in because I would do some dumb shit in class. Okay, yeah, and he'd always yeah. be like, Andrew, you're staying in. Wow. Every single time. That's awful. Uh, yeah, oh, no, that was common. Yeah. That was common. <laughs> I would say something dumb and he'd be like, that's lunch. And I, was, I just knew it was coming. I almost got so, comfortable with it. Did it make you sad or did you just not care about recess? Didn't give a fuck. Yeah, Couldn't nice. care less. Nice. I was going to go do some dumb shit after school anyway. Right. So it was really a horrible punishment. It didn't like shape It was bad for him. Way. I had to eat lunch with him. But right. I think he liked <laughs> eating lunch with me. It was almost okay. like this... Weird trickery where it's like, you're staying in. It's like, this is for you. <laughs> yeah, you this isn't for company. me, man. Yeah, you're bored. You yeah. you don't like you you hate you hate being alone at lunch. So you got a little wild weirdo. And then right. the chores were nothing. It was never like smack the chalk out of the erasers. It was always like I had to do like a writing assignment, but I liked that kind of shit. Yeah. So it was never really punishment. Okay. He's yeah, like, you can't be great. out and playing outside. That was it. But it was like after school, I'll go fucking play with those kids anyway. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I got I, from 3 p.m. on to do whatever the fuck yeah, I want outside. Yeah, dude. I'm good. So I don't remember. I don't remember almost any teacher's name, which is sad, but that's my brain is just gone from the the whiskey is probably where it's from. You're it cleaning is. out the, the guts right now. No booze for you, huh? No booze for me. Yeah. Are you done with it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I, uh, stopped drinking when I turned 30. Um, I uh, went out for my 30th birthday. I got smashed, which was very common. I woke up very hungover. Yeah. Uh, like miserably hungover. I puked. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to see what happens if I stop doing this for a while. And you did. And that was two and a half years ago. And you're done. And I'm, I'm, I don't feel, I don't feel like doing it. That's good. I don't feel like doing it. Now, would you partake in anything that's mind altering? I don't know. Uh, you potentially, like weed or no? I used to smoke weed all the time, you know, yep. every day. Um, and that's kind of my thing is it was, it's just hard for me to sort of uh, put limitations on things like that. It was sure. the same with the drinking. Like, I was never the type of person that drank alcohol every day. 
But right. I would go out on the weekend and drink, and I would end up drinking more than I wanted to, and I would black out, and I would feel miserable the next day, and right. you know, have a lot of anxiety around it. So I just wasn't, I wasn't chill about it. You yeah. Know? And same thing with weed. It was hard for me to be chill about it because it's like, well, weed is difficult because it's not that big a deal. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I, so can, I can kind of do most of the stuff I need to do even if I smoke, but then it's like, well, but then I'm smoking at 11 a.m. for no reason. And then and it started to affect me a little differently than it used to. It used to be the funnest thing in the world and just make me giggle and shit. And, and then it started to make me paranoid and feel weird about yeah. stuff. Then you're like, I feel my heart in my teeth. <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't like this anymore. I don't want to be this mindful of my body's inner workings. Right. You know, no, no thanks, At 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. I don't want to be reminded about this meat skeleton that I've got <laughs> right. jamming around with all these moving parts. No thanks. Exactly. I, I all but gave up a little bit of weed. I'll smoke a joint here once in a while at a party or something. Sure. But yeah, yeah. I used to be a big pothead when I was a kid. Yeah. And then I just kind of it slowly waned away. But also yeah. that was kind of the mix of my generation was stealing alcohol, smoking weed, and listening to hip hop. Was it was called hip hop was such a cultural, you know, part of that thing was right. drinking and getting high and 100%. listening to, to hip hop was like my that was like my whole youth. Yes. Okay, so who... Okay, wait. What was the name of the group in college? Cause, or high school? Uh, high school, it was still State of Mind. Oh, so wow. That name you guys stuck. stayed together. That name stuck... Yeah, yeah. So me and Brady stuck together, and then we added two additional members when we got to high school. And where are those cats? Are they still doing it or no? Uh, they're not still doing music. Oh, look, Brady still DJs and stuff. Like, casually, the, uh, I think they dabble, but... Um, it's not their career. It's not their career. They're not doing it professionally. Right. But uh, we're still in touch. We talk uh, sometimes via text and stuff like that. I see right. them every once in a while when we're all back in Portland. Do they, do they think guys. you've gotten big for your britches? Or they they talk shit? Do they shit on you? You know how your friends like you get on a little bit. Yeah. They're like, oh, big shot, huh? Thinks yeah. he's the man. Yeah, I'm lucky, man. They're they're super supportive. I think they're okay. stoked about it. Yeah, well, they're they're just happy to see somebody from uh from the hometown getting it like that. I think. Did it change in college? Was did it change? Yeah, no. in college I had a different. Gr- so in college it was kind of a different scenario because I was in jazz school and. Uh, I think it's tough, like, when you have a group for so long. It's such a formative time where I was always rapping with my boys, you know? Yeah. Like, and I was always doing music with, like, my best friends, yeah. you know? And, like, the, you know, and we're also, like, arguing and fucking fighting for no reason and being, like, best friends, you know what I mean? And getting past that and having the fucking times of our lives and drinking for the first time together. And all this type of stuff is wrapped up. And these are the people I'm making music with. And then you get to college and it's like, you don't have any of those people around you anymore. And it's, it's this right. whole other thing. But um, I, I was in music school, and so I was fortunate I got to connect with a lot of super talented musicians and writers and, and people like that. So I had actually like a, a band, like it was an instrumental band, and then I was the front person rapping. So it was like, you know, like inspired by the roots kind of. We had like a great group. Yeah, fantastic group. Yeah. One of my favorites. What were you guys called? We had, a, again, a really bad name. We, I always had, so MC Wonder, the band in college was called The Cleanse. <laughs> which is just evokes like a very la cleanse. very la yeah 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 i'm on a cleanse exactly the cleanse that was called the cleanse yeah what was the what was the thought behind that like cleanse your palate change your what is that I, there was zero thought behind it for okay. me yeah I, I can't remember who came you know it was one of those things where we suggested a few options and went with the one that seemed the best in the sure. moment were you still at that point mc wonder no 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 i had left uh mc wonder uh in high school a long time ago yeah i went through a series of different names. Uh, Did bef- you say goodbye to that alter ego when you left it? We MC like, Wonder, yeah. Good night, MC Wonder. Like you put down an old jersey. Yes, exactly. God bless MC Wonder. I, I must move on. Yes, my time has come. <laughs> I must leave you. Then what did you? Be- then what did you become in college? Uh, I just started going by Harry Mac. Then it was I, like that yeah, was it for time. I went through, which is basically my almost my my real name. What is your real? My name? My real name is Harry McKenzie. Same shit. Yeah, yeah. My, Harry Mack is what you were probably recalled your whole life. Huh? Everyone called me Harry Mack, H Mack. H Mack. Yeah, I hear that a lot. That, yeah. You say H Mack a lot when you freestyle. Oh yeah, I say every version of my name as often as possible while I freestyle. Well, but it's good to keep lacing it in because then it becomes synonymous with the guy that does that thing. Yeah, because nothing is more detrimental to the internet than when something goes viral and they're like, "Who did that?" Yeah. Oh, it's Do you a know what I mean? Thing. Somebody oh, will go, dude. oh, what's that guy? He does that thing. It's the thing. Um, right. Damn. And I do I do that. Like, I'll watch something that I like. Yeah. And I'll be like, yo, you got to see this dude that does that shit. And then they'll go, what's his name? I'm like, fuck, he's tall. Yeah. And I'll, I'll remember, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll remember all, everything about <laughs> everything that happened except for who did the shit. It's so difficult to establish your name as a brand in this, like, sort of, like, viral internet world. Sure. You know, because it, for so long, man, I mean, for, for years... Uh, for the first couple of years of me sort of like building my uh, my name on the internet and creating content, if I ever got like a big viral repost somewhere, it was like YouTube rapper does blank. 
Sure. You know, or or some version of that. YouTube yeah, yeah. freestyle rapper or, you know, random freestyler on Streets of Venice does blank. Or white freestyle, white guy yeah. rap, white, white rapper. White guy raps well, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> surprisingly well or something of that nature. And, and you, I get it. Like, I don't, there's no reason to drop my name at that point because to most of the population, the name doesn't ring any bells or, or have any significance. But it will now. But it will as, now. As time goes on, it's still, by yeah. the way, uh, White Guy Raps Well is the name of an album for sure if you want to take that. That's a good <laughs> yeah. album. Yes, White guy raps name. well is so good. I man. might have to run. With I'd that. buy that. I'd buy. What are the most influential albums of your youth that you think were the ones that really shaped either the way you have your style or the thing that you know clicked with you? You know, because yeah. those formative years are kind of when. You look, I know there's great music out right now. I listen to current hip hop now. Sure, a lot of current too. everything. I listen yeah. to everything. Yeah. Um, but I do know why I like a lot of things I like, and it's yeah. typically because I heard, like you, something we share. A lot of folk, a um, lot of funk, a lot of jazz. Yeah. Uh, not as much jazz, obviously, as you, but like that. Oh, that did always kind of come back into play for me. So any yeah. hip hop I liked was very much in that vein. But I want to hear which ones were big for you. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because like at the most formative stage when we first started making music when I was 11, 12 years old. It was like on the one hand we were listening to mainstream rap radio, right? You know, of the early two thousands. So. Sure. It was a combination of like very poppy, like Nelly, Ja Rule, Ashanti, Chingy type right. art, but and also legends, Jay Z, Nas, Snoop, Dre, Eminem. Sure. These people were getting a lot of a lot of play as well. But it was that sort of mainstream sound, and then uh, and Fifty Cent, people like that were coming out. And then on the other hand, we started to discover underground hip hop of the time. So our sort of gateway into that was this group called Black Alicious um, from the Bay, which is a phenomenal group. Um, I know them well. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Love so Black we Alicious. we picked up this album, Blazing Arrow by Black Alicious, and it immediately became everyone in the crew's favorite record. It was like it's our a Bible. great record. It, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's a great record. It's fantastic. R.I.P. to Gifted Gab, the rapper from the group. I was going to say, yeah, he yeah. died a year ago, maybe two years ago yeah, now. Dude, yeah, dude. And that shit hit me so fucking hard. Because Blazing Arrow was big for you. Because it was a huge record for me. You yeah. know? And, and, and a lot of... Um, a lot of legends, you know, in hip hop have, have passed, you know, even um, even after I've become like a, a rapper and sort of been aware of that. And, and it's always, you know, it's always like, God damn. But that one in particular, it was like it, it had a significance to me yeah. that would be sort of hard to even explain, you know, to somebody else. It was like, wow, this cat is one of the reasons I wanted to rap, period. Well, like you know? his like his ABCs like that. Uh... That that one. And that was actually on an earlier record. But I, right. I just remember the first that first track on Blazing Arrow. The rhyme style is so, it's the title track, Blazing Arrow, and the rapping is so insanely dense and intricate and like multi-syllabic he and was, all he these was things. He was so thick. Yeah. He yeah, was, and such like, a, so just such a linguistic kind of like master. I'd never heard anybody rhyme like that before. Right. And I remember all of us just kind of looked at each other like, yo, this is some next level shit. Right. And, and you know how it is at that age, we just start connecting dots. You know, they, they had a feature on that album from Charlie Tuna from Jurassic 5. So Love J5. We J5. found out about J5. Right. Loved that. And somehow or another, we found out, about, I think Questlove plays drums on one of the tracks. So we kind of found out about The Roots. Right. Um, and then and bit by bit, we found out about Def Jux, LP's label, you know, Love Aesop LP. Rock and Mr. Liff and artists like that. And so... We were kind of, to be honest with you, we were like the annoying kind of like snobby kids in middle school that were like, yeah, that's not, that's not the real shit. Oh, Jay-Z, like that's what you listen. Like we were hating on Jay-Z. Sure. Then. Now I'm a huge, I'm, I'm, I love Jay-Z, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I came around to be a huge fan, but at that time we were like, yo, if it's not like some hyper lyrical underground shit, if it's not Black Alicious or Aesop Rock right. or one of these type of cats, like it's not the real shit. I, you know? Well, and I, I, my, our age gap difference is a little bit more because for me- Yeah. Uh, you know, underground or backpack rap as it started to become. Now right. it's called indie rap, which is a whole different thing sure. because underground kind of lost its meaning. Right. But I grew up in the Midwest in Chicago, so I grew up with, you know, a lot of the rhyme say or shit. So Hell yeah. for me... Oh, Atmosphere. Atmosphere was, you know, uh, who was going to be on this show and... Sh Sean Slug, we're still waiting for you to come on the show. Let's go, Slug. No, he he he. We, did, we coordinated, and he was like, "I don't know how to use these microphone Zoom things because it was oh all, yeah, it was yeah, COVID." Yeah. Right. So I said, "Next time I come to the Midwest, we'll do it then." That's but dope. those That'd guys awesome. were kind of for me the um that was and we weren't well you say where you were like oh you listen to that shit fuck you for us it was so new to everybody yeah we were nerds about it like yeah. we were kind of like you've got to hear this album like yeah 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 you know when Aesop Aesop Rock 
you know, daylight is like one of those things. Yeah. Where I, I remember showing Classic. that to like a million people yeah. and them still being like, I don't know. And Sage Francis, another guy that I wanted to have on this show that we've, we've keep trying to is like, I told Sage when I was in high school for one of my, I don't know what class it was. I don't remember. I had a nerdy, weird, cool teacher, and he yeah. let me read the lyrics of Makeshift Patriot, which was about yeah. 9-11. And I remember yeah. reading it to class, and people like stayed after the bell rung to hear me finish it. Yeah. Because I wow. was like, you got to hear this artist wrote this song that I think is so deep it's and powerful. An amazing song. It's an it's amazing song. It's a great song. song. So that, for yeah. me, was our little era of like... Yes. Um, back then, it was very underground, I guess. And we would go to those shows, and they were fucking, you know... 180 people sometimes yeah. or sometimes less I mean, dude yeah us too yeah atmosphere stage friend i mean you're naming so many of the people where like for me that was middle school and and we were obsessed with those groups man. like did you watch any of the like um like were you obsessed with watching like freestyle competitions and did that kind of fuel this whole thing we did yeah like in the very beginning it was like you know brady had i didn't have cable growing up i had like five channels literally. no shit like, that was it yeah we never had cable my was parents my, bought my, cable like as soon as me and my sister left for college. And I was like, oh, really? Um, what was that for? Did they not want you to be? They were like, you don't need TV. It's bullshit. I think it was just like they didn't want to pay for it. And yeah, yeah well, we were like a ripoff. I mean, right. Yeah. And we weren't like a huge TV family. We watched a decent amount of TV. I watched The Simpsons and shit like that. But um, I don't know. It just wasn't a priority, really. It didn't seem like a priority. But when it, you went to kids, other kids' houses, were you like, I, I get to watch yeah, cable? Exactly. Yeah, and that deal. was the thing. So we would go to Brady's house every day after school. That's where we would freestyle and stuff. And and uh, we he had cable and we would watch like 106 and park free South fridays sure and see the battles and it was like gin was like killing it week after week and gin was and incredible we we definitely fell in love with that energy and just i think just the fact that there's no like pyrotechnics there's no band there's no anything there's no filler there's no filler right and it's people blowing people's minds yeah. with just the words coming out of their mouth idea idea was like Shout another rest in peace uh, another yes. guy that went too fast that was a guy when i was a kid i remember watching him and being like holy fuck is this guy good yeah he was shocking to me and i and i was studying when i was a kid to try to find out how much of that stuff was you know a little pre-written sure you know because there's this ideology of when somebody goes jay-z you know, he freestyles all his lyrics and you're like uh, okay he doesn't write down exactly what he's going to say. Yeah. But he's mapped in his brain how to get there already. Yeah. And, you know, not like I'm showing the magician's card trick. You know everyone's kind of keen to know that, like, you can kind of tell, oh, yeah. you know, when Big L d put his Big L freestyle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't completely off the top, but it right. was... Not attached to a record prior. Exactly. It wasn't anything he had done anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, so that, I remember like really getting in deep with that. And I was like, oh, there is a big difference between seeing yeah. these two worlds. Because the yeah. word freestyle kind of gets thrown around and it's incorrect a lot of times. It's very confusing. Yes. It's extremely confused. I think there needs to be just like, all right, guys, like let's take a moment now to yeah. sort of codify the, the words we're going to use. Because the funny thing is the original meaning of freestyle, like like in the 80s, like if you ask like like according to like Big Daddy Kane and people of that sure. era, it was not an improvised rhyme. Right. It was just a rap about nothing in particular. Correct. And, and yeah. generally like a lyrical flex, you know, free form. It's not going to be 16 bars with a chorus. It might be 100 bars continuously with right. no break, you know. Yeah. Uh, rapping about being doper than everybody or, you know, the all the girls. My that new you're car, with. my yeah, new girl. All yeah. this shit, which, which is funny because now that sort of, freestyle has come back around to essentially mean that again yeah but there was a period like in the 90s where this whole thing we're talking about of improvising and freestyling off the top as it's now called became a thing and then yeah. and then that became freestyling but it's just hilarious that even now there's still so much confusion around that and like in every video that has freestyle in the title like any funk flex freestyle or whatever right it's freestyle, freestyle. on sway yeah Every comment, even though 99.9% .9 of those are written or pre-composed or pre-memorized in some capacity, right? Um, or some sort of juggling of pre-composed material that's maybe being arranged live, right? right. Some, yeah, some yeah. level of hybrid. In the comment section, in every single time, there's this massive like debate of like, oh, this isn't a real freestyle. Or like, oh, he wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah no. Yeah, without fail. We, we yeah. know that he wrote it. Like, you know, it is what it is. It, and and the thing is, I'm a huge fan of freestyles like that. You know, yeah. I mean, Lil Dicky, like his freestyle on Sway is like one of the greatest, you know, freestyle performances. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's I wrote that for him. I know you did. Yeah. And, I think and he knows it. <laughs> Dave, stop fucking pretending <laughs> like you come up with any of your own shit. I write everything he says lyrically, it's mine. I had a he writes the TV show. That's fine. Okay, but I all right. write all everything he spits is all me. All it's the always bars. been me. That do you guys have a good deal worked out? Or I mean, in terms, of I get paid nothing. 
Yeah. Okay. That but I just, like a good... yeah, no, it's a really bad deal. But I mean, we're just going to continue on this relationship because the TV show is fun. So <laughs> it's worth it. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, today's episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Simply Safe Home Security. Here at Whisk Ginge, we believe that your home should be the safest place on earth for every family. That's why I use and I recommend Simply Safe. Simply Safe is advanced home security that puts you and your home and your family safety first. That's why I love it. They got these uh, great little uh, little tiny little things you can set up by your door to find out who's coming and going. They got 24/7 professional monitoring. Simply Safe's agents take action the moment a threat is detected, dispatching police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not there, even if you're out on vacay. Simply Safe uses proprietary video verification technology so that monitoring agents can visually confirm the threat in order to get higher priority for a 911 dispatch. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. They decide what's going on over there. They send them out to your house. Listen, uh, I, I like Simply Safe because I like seeing what's going on. I got the cameras all over the outside of the house, so don't try sneaking over. You know, if a FedEx guy throws the package a little bit too hard, I say something. I go voice, con- voice control and I say, hey man, put it down softly, all right? Don't do that ever again. That's my shampoo. I need that put down softly. Um, if you want to uh, have your house safely secured, Simply Safe is the best way to do it. Uh, I really do I think the technology is simple. It's easy to use, which I love. App integrated, which is also wonderful. Um, all And it can all connect to one singular source. So you can see different things in different parts of the home, which I truly love. You can customize the perfect system for you on your own. You don't have to take, you know, the one that I do. You can do it in just a few minutes at Simply Safe dot com slash whiskey go today claim a free indoor security camera that's pretty incredible a free indoor security camera right now for this intera- interactive monitoring uh, plus 20 percent off it's pretty good go to simplysafe.com slash whiskey simplysafe.com slash whiskey ginger i like gingers no you're right uh, though the free the word freestyle does kind of get um it just gets kind of uh misappropriated but that's yeah. fine it's going to continue to be that way because Rap changes and exactly it's always it's 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 changed so much over the years, but I do you know the ones that really stuck out always some of those lines, uh, Big L especially too. Yeah, um, yeah. ninety eight freestyle. Yeah, ninety eight yeah. freestyle. Oh God, you know, dude. yeah, Beavis because I get nothing, I get nothing but butthead. Head. I mean, that was like one of the greatest. I remember Showstopper, that, bro. Especially because I watched Beavis and Butthead at the time, <laughs> right? And it was like logged into my brain of how great that was that he did that, but. Um, but yes, the meaning has uh, has shifted so yeah. heavily. But you, you truly, truly, your street, your street uh, videos are you freestyling legit? Yeah, I basically always freestyle off the top of the dome. Yeah, know? every time I freestyle, um, I'm quote unquote truly improvising, which yes. doesn't mean that there aren't um, um, like in the jazz world we call them licks. You know, like I have licks, aka. If you'll hear me say things again and again and again. How many times have I rhymed full throttle with water bottle? Sure. You know, so much so that we sell a water bottle that says full, full throttle, throttle on my merch shop. You know, it's like a meme. Go to the merch shop and buy that right <laughs> hey. now. Buy that full throttle water bottle. <laughs> Subtle plug. Um, so, uh, but I, I mean, I'm truly improvising in the sense that I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to say. I don't plan it out. Sure. And uh, everything I'm rhyming about is, you know, I'm incorporating the scenery and things that I see around me or random words that are being thrown at me. And things. Well, like that let's talk about the progression now since yeah. I've seen you now and we talked a little bit before the show. But so you're, you're touring and what I noticed, I talked to other comedians and uh, um, a guy had said to me, a comic friend was like, who the fuck is this guy? Do you know yeah. who this guy is? <laughs> yeah. And I said, I actually do know who that guy is. I said, yeah. I don't know him personally, but I really like his shit. Uh, he freestyles. And I showed this comic friend of mine. He was like, holy fuck, because you were touring uh, at comedy clubs. So yeah. my friend noticed you were playing, I don't know, I think it was at the Improv, in, not Pittsburgh, but it was on the East Coast somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh shit, he's at this improv, that improv. And then my buddy was like, is he a stand-up? I said, no, he does this. He does these freestyles. So at live shows, yeah. what are you giving people at stand-up clubs? Like, what are you doing at those shows? Like, yeah, why, yeah. Why, I guess, why stand-up clubs? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, I mean, one of the main reasons that we were touring in stand-up clubs, to be honest, is because we had a plug at uh, the company that owns all the improvs. Right, Levity. Yeah, we talked <laughs> yeah, about that, right. Uh, at Levity Live. And and they were really awesome. And uh, they basically said, you know, I, I had done a, a little thing at um, at the lab here in LA, which is like the smaller side room. In the at, improv. At, at yeah. the Hollywood Improv. Yeah. And um, just to sort of test it out. And see how a show would go, and uh, and they said, hey man, like that was great. It, you know, if you want to perform at any and all of the clubs, you know, let us know and, and we'll make it happen. And 
I really wanted to go on tour. You know, the world was opening back up after yeah. COVID. And this was just a great opportunity for us to be able to book a string of shows all in a row and get inside clubs and do what I do. But let's say this. Yeah. Is there, do you, is there and I'm obviously projecting, are you not doing music clubs because you feel like maybe you don't want that vibe yet that you're like, I'd rather just stick in this kind of alternative world a little bit. It's interesting. We did a mix. So we had five or six like traditional music clubs sure. on the run as well. And then the rest were comedy clubs. Um, both were amazing, but uh, the music clubs turned up a little bit more. I got to be honest because they were standing clubs, I think. Sure. And uh, comedy clubs are all seated. It's comedy t- clubs are tough. seated, which is great for comedy, you know? Yeah. It's fantastic. And it honestly worked well for what I do too, you know, because it's a, it's a fully improvised show. It's a freestyle show. So it's not like I'm pulling out the hits and right, <laughs> everyone's, right. you know, singing along. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fully improvised and it's very, uh, you know, I'm engaging with the audience throughout the whole thing. I'm getting words right. and suggestions and concepts from the audience that I'm then turning into songs and things of that nature. And so, you know, it, it's nice for people to be able to sit and enjoy a meal and stuff while they watch the show. But, um, it's not as engaged as much as it is when they're standing. Yeah, because when you're standing, you kind of have to move and sway. Or you're gonna you don't have a choice, so you look weird as shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And, and there's just something about the density with which you can pack people in, you know, when they're right. all standing and you kind of look out there and see the, um, the sea of people. So uh, for our next tour, I think we are going to lean more um, music venues. But uh, yeah. I enjoyed rocking the comedy clubs, man, and it was a great uh, – I'm, I'm, we might continue doing that too to whatever degree it makes sense, and it was great to get in those rooms. Sure. But I'll be honest, man. It makes me nervous. It, it made me nervous as fuck, especially in the beginning. Because I would be in these legendary comedy rooms with all the great comedians like plastered all over the walls. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't do that. You yeah. know what I mean? And like suddenly I felt this sort of like <laughs> like weird responsibility where it's like, oh, but am I supposed to like do stand up tonight? Yeah, like, no. You know? No, those people are all pieces of shit, man. Fuck all those <laughs> You don't got to feel weird about fuck all those comics, man. <laughs> I mean, I feel this. Dude, I play music venues. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I play a lot of music venues. So right. it's like I do stand up at a lot of theaters or venues that are alternative. I feel the same way. I mean, dude, I fucking... I play the Chicago Theater, and then you you know you read like Paul McCartney's name on the wall. Right. And you're like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, once yeah. you get over that bullshit, that you're like, this is just an empty room that people need to come see me do my thing at, yes. regardless of your thing. Yes. It doesn't matter, you know. But uh, I think the assumption was, the reason I said that is because I thought I thought maybe the assumption was like, oh man, are these comedians gonna think? fuck this dude right like, you know but obviously no to tell you that no of course not right right right. but i think people do instinctively comics are so territorial because right. they're losers and they're insecure <laughs> fucking egomaniacal pieces of shit that they're like just dude fucking trying to do our thing right it's like no dude he does his own fucking relax right and especially when i showed my buddy he was like oh shit that's fucking not-. our reaction is always like what are you doing at this dump <laughs> Why don't right. you, you get out of here, dude? We're telling fart jokes, man. Go do that magic somewhere where it's where it's deserved. Right, right, right. But are you doing an hour or, or how long? Uh, are you yeah, doing? an hour. Yeah. Do you bring someone with you? Uh, yeah, my DJ comes out with me, Sir okay. Jazz. He's incredible. Sir Jazz. Yes. Sir Jazz. Shout out to Sir Jazz. Shout out to Sir Jazz. Uh, he's phenomenal, and so he'll warm the crowd up for the first half hour, and then I'll go out for an hour and do my thing. And you're taking suggestions almost the whole time, or are you kind of spinning off into your own little thing every time? Yeah, it's it's a it's a mixture of both, you know. Um, but we have various ways of sort of engaging the audience and getting words from people we sure. actually we uh came up with this way where we're able to do like a digital word submission thing so there's a qr code during the dj set Sick. people are pulling out phones and whose idea it was and that can, uh, it was my idea actually okay good that's yeah. proprietary man yeah. you better fucking patent that shit yes now. oh yeah that's it's actually the, very smart in the process yeah no um <laughs> yeah it was cool it was and, and that's the whole thing about a freestyle show right a fully improvised show is one of the challenges is how are we going to scale it yeah. You know, because freestyling generally is, I mean, traditionally it's happening on a, on a, on a street corner with, you know, eight to 15 people. Right. And that's sort of the, the best, uh, like the ideal scenario for a freestyle because everybody can hear even with no amplification and everybody can see what's being referenced. Right. You know, They're right in front of your face. Everyone's on the same fucking page. Right. It's very clear what's happening. But as soon as you put, and, and it's a cipher and it's kind of like all encompassing, it's this 360 degree kind of thing. As soon as you put me up on a stage, it's like, here's the performer and then here's this audience. There's immediately sort of that level of discomfort connect and then if i'm doing a bar about your t-shirt in the in the front row you know who the fuck cares in the back they can't see can't that see it. it means nothing you That's know true. Yeah. Uh, so we had to come up with ways to uh, that, that was kind of the biggest challenge to going on tour was for me to kind of brainstorm and 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 figure out ways to sort of show it so we have all these different things we can do now where there's like a live sort of camera feed that's going to the 
you know, to the screen behind, to the projector behind sure. me and things like that. If I'm walking Chris through the Chris Rock audience. is doing that now. Really? That's yeah, dope. Chris Rock is doing a reverse camera on the audience because he's got, there's a great comic that's opening for him. This guy, Rick Ingram, who's a, right. a comedy store guy. And Rick yep. does a ton of crowd work. Yeah. And he's extremely astute. I mean, he's you right. as a comedian. Yes. He's extremely quick and very astute and his jokes are very sharp. And he's so good at like kind of mapping out the way he does it with crowd work. <clears throat> I've never seen anybody else do it the way he does it. Yeah. He's phenomenal. But they have a camera that shows who they're on so people can see. That's Because for us, it is tough. It yeah. is tough as a comic when some some bozo says some dumb shit and the other side of the room is like, what did they say? Exactly. And then they're saying, what did they say? And the other is like, uh, and they're telling them and you're like, ah, fuck. You're losing. It gets, it it gets into lost. Chaos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It gets lost. Well, what, what's interesting to me is... Um, you know, you playing in these in these comedy club worlds, in our world, you know, when we're on our come up and you're not selling exclusively tickets to fans, right? They do right. this thing called, what they call papering a room. Do you, you know what that is? No, no. That's where they kind of give away discounted tickets, sometimes free tickets because okay. they want to fill a room because you're a younger person. And you can't, you couldn't sell out on your own. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So when they're papering rooms, a lot of times you're getting people that aren't your fans. Yeah. So they're showing up and, they're, you know, that's, that's usually when you get a lot of disruption, when you get a lot of fucking awkward moments right. what we call bombing right do have you bombed at some of these have you bombed uh, at all or no not not on tour but i've bombed in my life yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. but on <laughs> tour is good because it's all your fans yeah it, yeah but are you bombing are you ever bombing in public and you and you have it on tape of you eating shit in front <laughs> you know of people? what man I, not really that we have on tape good <laughs> uh and that's not any kind of weird that's flex. a good thing it's not, yeah 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 um i've i've been like you know rejected plenty of times or had people not really give a fuck yeah i guess i've bombed there was one time i was doing a freestyle in public for the gorilla bars my gorilla bar series which is the man on the street yeah. content you were mentioning yeah and uh <laughs> it was funny because i just approached a couple a guy and a girl and i asked and you can kind of tell right away when the energy's not i'm like i shouldn't have asked but at that point i'm not gonna be like you know what never mind uh yeah. you guys don't seem into it you gotta go for it you right? gotta go for it you're yeah. committed yeah uh, but i could tell it was gonna be a little weird and like a few bars in she just pulls out her phone and starts like doing stuff on her phone you know <laughs> i'm just standing in front of two people <laughs> you know there's nowhere to hide no Yo, you're on your phone yeah. again yeah and, you, and, and of course then you i have do to. a bar about the phone yeah but yeah. it's um so it's funny in that way. But, but um, you're putting it, yourself out there, which is great. I mean, I think that's yeah. like the way you do it. Kudos, because I think that's it's brave. You're kind of swimming in that open water, which obviously is going to get you. you better content on the other side of it. You're going to make create good shit. Do you have moving forward? Is that do you want to make like do you want to make an album now too? Yeah. Like of of all written shit, or are you going to in, incorporate other stuff? Yeah, uh, I'm working on like recording music and stuff right now. Um, I don't, I don't really write it. It's more of like a freestyle process where I'm sure. sort of like freestyling a lot You're of Jay -Z. material. We and know. The best. <laughs> You're Jay-Z. We know. <laughs> yeah, no pens allowed No in the pens, studio, dog. You know? No yeah, pens. No, no, no. You know he said that because he only used Sharpie. That's what it was. He's That's like, no it. pens, no yes, pens. Yes, right. No, no, not what we would traditionally but define as a pen. But he loves charcoal pencils. That yeah, that, was his, that's <laughs> that Jay-Z's clutch. Only, uh, yes. Only so you're making the album, pencils. White Boy Raps Well. White Boy Raps Well. Yes, that's it's coming soon. I can't, I can't, you know, reveal anything at this moment. Uh, no, all but, independent or record label? Uh, all independent. Good for you. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole new uh, kind of challenge for me. It's a whole new space for me. You know, I'm so yeah. known for freestyling and improvising and creating this video content. Um, I'm not so known on the recorded, like the traditional recorded music side of things. So it's That's exciting. Right. That gets you know? there. Yeah, that gets get, there. Yeah, it gets you're there. opening. You're using that audience to do that other thing. Exactly, and they're super supportive. You know, I've yeah. done little projects, little EPs where it's kind of like me freestyling off top about subjects and things like that, and and with more song structure and hooks and things like that. And um, you know, my, my fan base loves them and supports them. So it's that's dope. great. I what's the what's the end game goal in your mind? Whether or not Man. it's you know solidified yet, but like, what do you think this future? What would you like to see have happen with all of this? Man, uh, that's a great question. I mean, uh, I would love to be able to continue to tour and you know do do uh, bigger venues and 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 connect with more people sure. on the road, see more of the world, travel through doing music. I want to keep making video content because I love doing it. You know, yeah. keep doing the YouTube stuff. I want to keep uh, recording and put out more music. I kind of want to do all of it, man. And I, I'm really fortunate. Like, I feel like I have really sort of. Um, seen firsthand the truth behind this concept that you know you don't need to be like a global sensation to have a successful career. No, you know you don't need to be Elvis. Cardi B. Yeah, you know yeah or Elvis. Elvis. What am I? <laughs> what am I my dad. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I won't be uh, compared with Elvis too too much. Uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> Troubled man. Yeah yeah. Troubled man. Um, 
but no, it's like you don't have to be that like top tier mainstream level of celebrity or whatever it is to have a, a, a really successful and rewarding sure. career. And I think I'm lucky in that I have a really, really supportive fan base and, and uh, you know, people who are genuinely interested in what I'm doing and right. want to buy tickets when I'm doing a show and want to buy merch when we release it and want to support the videos and watch them and share them and all that stuff. So I just want to keep building, man. You seem like a good dude. You did. You, you seem like you had a good, a good, solid upbringing. What was mom Thank and dad? You. What would mom and dad? Were they like good old fashioned? Sure. He's, a, he's in sales. She's a what, no, no, what no. mom and dad do? Uh, shout out to mom and dad. Uh, my dad is uh, was in the flower business for his whole life. A flower man. Uh, yeah. So he a flower man. A flower man. Yes, yeah. a flower man. Uh, a very established flower man. No, he worked on a uh, a farm. Basically, he worked on a bulb farm that grew lily oh, bulbs. Oh, uh, wow. Harvested lily bulbs as well as hostas and fresh cut peonies. And uh, you know your flowers. Bro. Yeah, he yeah. sold. I know my flowers. Uh, and so he sold those products like you know wholesale sure um so like if you went to uh you know like a kroger store it, 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 you might see some of the products that were grown on his farm okay uh so that was my dad and then my mom was a teacher she taught third i was gonna grade say teacher i swear to god yeah, 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 i was yeah. gonna be like sales teacher yeah but teacher what did she teach third grade third grade yeah you had a wholesome wholesome upbringing man yeah yeah it was good no i really i was lucky man i had super supportive parents like they really supported my music that's great um which was dope uh, begged them for the drum set, you know, and they eventually went for it and, and things like that. And, you know, it was, it was, it was cool. And, and even when I said I wanted to study music in school, um, and try to make that my career, you know, I think that's a, like a, a horrible thing for a lot of parents to hear, you know, from their kid yeah. is like entertainment. Why? <laughs> right. Like what, what are you going to get out of it? <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't like that at all for me, man. It was like, yeah, you know what? Like, go ahead. You know, that's what makes you happy. And we, we think you could probably do it. So, and you did now they're, are. are they stoked about it? They see what you're doing. They're today. unbelievably stoked, slightly yeah. confused. Uh, sure. But, Look at me. Are you kidding me? You yeah. think I know how to explain this to my family? <laughs> this so is fun. nuts. Like you talk to people on camera. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, then that's it's a part of a comedy world where we create and promote and <laughs> it, it this is insane to my yeah. family. Well, they don't podcast, know what this is. I mean, like the whole concept of a podcast is like relatively new, right? I mean, it, 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 I mean it is. You know, it's been around, but it's like it's it, it's it's just we've we really stole what radio was without limits. It was right. just radio without borders. Yes. You know, terrestrial yeah. radio as fucking Howard Stern loves to say. It was right. you know, like the king of conversation, you know, you develop this world, but you, I don't have to, we don't have to worry about the FCC or whatever getting mad at me for saying fuck. Right. You know, I, I don't have to blank that out. Which is so much better. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, YouTube will do, you know, they'll, they'll put their hands all over it. Sure. As soon as Google bought them, man, they got weird. And now I'm talking about it. Now I'll be in prison for the, I'll be in YouTube prison. Yeah. But, they, but the corporate entities of that are less controlling than, you know, than when you do a, they're not too weird about like swearing and stuff like that, right? No, they... but I do see what's going on. I yeah. see what you're doing, YouTube. <laughs> I see what's going on. I mean, look, yeah, it's yeah. all about advertising dollars for them because right. Google has inherited this, you know, massive library and, and for them to make more money, any show that is successful, they're obviously going to give it priority if it's easier to sell. Yeah. It's yeah. no mystery. Right. Yeah. Right, I see right, through right. all the smoke. If it's brand safe and, and Yeah, and dude. They want it. Yeah, they yeah. want yeah, they want uh they want to be able to promote whatever chemical is killing your kids safely without me saying fuck. <laughs> right. Right? That's really what it is. The priorities. Are yeah, very, priorities. Yeah, well, have yeah. you seen all these things? It's like every, all these companies are owned by like, everyone's owned by like three people. Right. You know, it's like Amazon, Disney, P&G. Yeah. yeah, they're fucking, it's, you know, so, but God bless, you know. And, but as we say this, and a YouTube ad will pop up right now. <laughs> For exactly. PG, P and G, or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> it's Welcome like, Chrome. do you need baby wipes? <laughs> like right away, it'll pop the fuck up. Yeah. Uh, so it's fun. for us, it's the copyright, you know, music thing uh, or rap oh, instrumentals, yeah. like sourcing music to use in the videos. Right. I was, I was going to say that too because I was like, I wonder, are you making that music that you're freestyling over? I used to, and then it was just too much for me to be pumping out that many beats that's a lot yeah it's a lot i like producing but i, I wasn't i would just have to turn into a machine because what we about do live what about streams. your dj um yeah shout out to jazz he makes he makes, he uh, makes he's a great producer okay yeah, he's a super dope producer uh and we're starting to do more stuff together but um for me it's just crazy the the volume of instrumentals that would be required because we're constantly going out and doing content or doing like two sure. hour live streams and trying to keep the music fresh but um for me what's been really cool is there's a big community of producers on youtube yeah. that you know make beats and then post them on YouTube and then the business model is basically like you can lease those beats non-exclusively so like artists who don't can't afford exclusive production can pay twenty dollars to like use the beat as an mp3 and things like that's that that's nice yeah is that yeah. a new thing I don't know anything about that uh in the last I guess like five years or something like that it's a whole thing so you'll use a beat that's made by someone else you give them credit for it yes and then you pay a couple of bucks and then yeah you pay there's various tiers for like 
how many streams it's going to get. You know, they'll cap, like, if this is streamed more than 10,000 times, you have to upgrade to this lease level and things like that. So it's wow. just a way for artists who don't have, like, label budgets to get production and also a way for producers to just get their music out and get it on songs. That's true. And then they're going to click and be like, yo, who made that? And it's exactly. this dude. Well, have you had one of those songs? Have you had something that's gone so big that you and the producer now are, like, working together more where you're like... Um, I have relationships with a lot of the producers that we've used, like, in my Amigo Bars videos and things like that because yeah. they have a lot of views and we always credit everybody and link back to their YouTube and things like that and shout them out. Um, but my thing's kind of, I'm kind of in this unique gray area where I'll kind of use people's beats and credit them or reach out and say like, yeah, is it cool if I use your beats in my videos? They're not really becoming songs. Like sure. they're not going out to Spotify and becoming like bangers and hit songs that go to radio. Right. They're just sort of being used for YouTube content. And that's been really dope. There's a lot of great producers on, on YouTube that I've been able to collaborate with that's and connect great. with. Yeah. I want to see that if there is a transferable world from from not just you making a record, but it is tough going from that freestyle thing to them being like, hey, it's like what we call, you know, like in our world, like scripted and non-scripted. It's like right. reality doing scripted television is always kind of a thing. People are, there's a hiccup. Yeah. People are like, mm, what is, what is this? You know? Right. And, and, you know, can it be successful, which is the challenge for you. And I wish you the most luck when you're doing a written album. Cause Thank I know you. it's tough cause people like you in this light. Yes. So when you're like, I'm good at this too. And they're like, nah, I don't know, man, go right. back to doing the thing I like. Yeah. 100%. That, is, that is what's hard. Yeah, it is. I mean, I look at, you know, uh, cannabis is probably my favorite example of somebody who I thought was so good on other people's records. Yeah. His, his features were fucking incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. And then he puts out his own record and I think he got a lot of like flack for it. So to speak, mm. it was just ne- like, I don't know if it was ever as successful as he was when he did other people's right. shit. Which right. was tough because people just liked him in that light. Didn't yeah. mean that he wasn't good on his own record. No, right, right, right. It's just so, I think that does a thing to people that tricks them. It's the same yeah. with people love the podcast, I love the shows. And then if they come see stand up, it's comedy, it's a different vein, but they're like, I like, do the podcast stuff. Right. And you're like, no, 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 this is not the thing. It's a different oh, thing. Oh, yeah. It's so, it's so real. People just get used to seeing things in a certain context and sure. that's, and, and they fall in love with that. And then, they want that sort of rewarding feeling of seeing that again and again. And I get it. And, you know, I feel fortunate that I have so many fans of my freestyling. And sure. I also feel fortunate that I love freestyling. <laughs> you know, it's, it's my favorite part of what I do. I love improvising. And I've always been an improviser. So it's dope. I, I feel like I'm alive in, in an era where it's possible to because we're in this whole social media area era where you can, you know, anything you're doing, if it's interesting, you can show it to people. Yes. And, and if it's good, um, even if it's not good, even if it's not good, <laughs> you it can might show the fuck out huge. of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It probably will be bigger if it's not good. <laughs> yeah. I think the yeah. revolution of TikTok has shown the more shit it is, yeah. the more it will go. Right. Right. Like I'll get stuck on these videos where I'll see them. I'm like, why do I like this so much? It's fucking terrible. I know. It's it's wild. Like there's an old fat man that spits off to the side <laughs> and he's like, I'm still here giving it to your mama, boy. And people have looped it and duetted it. And I, it's so dumb and so funny. Yes. Like the best one I saw, a girl opened up her jeans and turned the other way and he spits off camera and it hits her. <laughs> you know, she acts like it hits her and she, she like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. faints. I'm like, it's such a stupid fucking video. Right. But it's perfect because the, the time, oh, yeah. the timing of it is exactly what you want. Something like quick and gross and dumb yes. and then get the fuck out. Are you putting your shit on TikTok or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You we, are. We post on TikTok daily. Oh, yeah. you, every day? Every day, yeah. God damn. Well, you're doing the, uh, what's the guy's name who does the model that... Uh, Gary V. Yeah, Gary yeah, yeah, V. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We basically do that for freestyling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, long form to you. Dude, you gotta put your fucking shit on fucking TikTok. <laughs> I've shit, I've shit on him so many times. Yeah. I, I, out of love, it's all love. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just think it's so funny. This guy that he's like, <laughs> he's a motivational speaker that says fuck every three words. Right. It's, you know, little like thirteen year old kids. Yeah. He's like, you just want to like get in the shoe sales. He's like, then fucking sell the shoes <laughs> off your fucking feet, you little fucking idiot. So <laughs> you got a good impersonation, he, dude. He's I just, just met Gary. I just you met, did? Yeah, yeah. We just did a thing. We did a a, a talk. Um, like on stage at, at a cannabis event. It was it was wild. First time I'd ever done that. Like sitting like me and you are, but it's me and Gary and chatting. And chatting, yeah. And he was like, you fucking smoke weed, dude. <laughs> just, I have to clown on him because it makes me laugh. Every time I yeah. see these motivations, it's just like, there's a group of guys like that. They're like the liver king. Or there's guys on right. kale is bullshit. There's guys on the internet who live by this... Uh, uh, this like this is the way to do everything, and that's great that they have passion. Right. But it just makes me laugh that I'm like, all right, dude. <laughs> other people have other things going on. Right, 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 too. Right. You know, when it's just like you have to do it this way, you're like, I don't know, dude. Right. Do you? Right. Do you have to do there's it that multiple, way? There's multiple. There's ways a lot to get of venue. There, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Like, look at you, dude. You're a different. You're taking such a different route to get to wherever it is you're going to end up going. Yeah. That it is wild to watch. That is why I was a fan. That I hit you guys up because I was like, I want to talk to you and find out. You know. 
how this whole thing started with you. Yeah. But, but also, have you had any hangups yet or you're not there yet? Have you had anything where you're tired of the fucking grind or you're like, I'm getting tired of making these fucking... I'm tired of doing these live shows. Have you hit the wall a little uh, bit yet? N- not really. It's I mean, coming. No, yeah, I'm yeah. kidding. I'm no, kidding. I, well, there's been times where I've had to sort of rebalance the portfolio, so to speak, you know, doing yeah. too much of one type of thing and and then I want to mix it up and, and I have to dial it back and... and uh, you know, we do this series called Amigo Bars, which is be connecting with strangers on a video chat on the internet and blowing their. I've minds seen that right. You, yeah. you you use um, yeah. What's the platform? But it's, it's I, I it's call it Omegle. Omegle. I think it's called Omegle. Omegle. Yeah, but I, I just messed it up the first. Yeah, time. Yeah, because when it, you said so. I was like, am I? Do I say it wrong? No, no I say, you're, you're I, right. I believe. I think you're right. Omegle. Omegle is correct. Uh, uh, either yeah. way, let's say Omegle. I like yeah. it better. Oh, thank yeah. you. I think it's oh, Omegle. Yeah, that's support. Right yeah, now. fuck that other way. Yeah. Well, it's like GIF or JIF. You're like, come on, man. It doesn't matter. GIF is fine. It's a G. Yeah. It's a G. Uh, <laughs> but I've seen that. That was kind of like the new age version of of uh, of um, yeah, yeah, but the gorilla stuff. It was it was my uh, quarantine solution. Cor- yeah, right. For not to- being able to go out in public and say, right. "Hey, can I spit for you?" <laughs> right. But it worked. But it, but have you had a lot of times where this is kind of like just ending up nowhere because people are not paying attention or the stream is bad and all that shit. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. All types of weird shit happens on it. I'm, well, I mean, sites like Omegle or Omegle are notorious, you know, obviously for just like dudes jerking off. And, yeah. Are you, you know. catching guys jerking off whenever you pop up? Uh, not whenever I pop up, but I've seen a, a decent number of, of dicks on there. You got a lot of dicks. I, I've seen, uh, we're on uh, episode 68, and I think I've seen like 15 to 20 dicks. I hope you see so many dicks on episode 69. Yeah. I hope the whole thing is dick. <laughs> the whole thing is dicks, yeah, man. Yeah, YouTube, YouTube will love that. Yeah. Well, yeah, but uh, but the but the that's the gross thing is guys will just jerk off and wait till someone pops up that they're going to jerk off to, right? That's like yeah, the whole... Yeah, that's like the thrill. What was the old thing called? Chat, chat, uh, chat, chat roulette. Chat roulette, chat roulette, chat roulette. Chatterbait, yeah. Chatterbait, I think, is like an actual porn version of that. It's the same. Yeah, the yeah, idea yeah. was stolen from chat roulette. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sit and jerk off until somebody shows up. Right. That, that's, <laughs> what I kind of want is a guy to pop up, you you start freestyling, he starts jerking off, but then mm-hmm. you got a flow about him jerking off. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. would I commit at that? It's like the ultimate improviser's test, you know? Would you do How it? What do you do, you? man? I mean, you don't have to air it, but I, I, let's Shouts see. to my man with a stick in his hand. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I think I would have to find a way to navigate. Your I'm... sack is whack, Jack. <laughs> yeah. God, oh, I think fun. you freestyling about a guy's dick in his hand is very that's patreon you got to put that on a on a uh, yes. paywall site patreon exclusive yeah yes do you yes. guys do patreon we too do patreon put yep. that on the paywall if you got if you get a guy jerking off uh put up a, a jerk off uh yeah a whole jerk off yeah. <laughs> a whole freestyle jerk off episode. episode i'd watch that <laughs> yeah not for the jerk off but i just want to see you flow about some naked weird obscure dude it why do guys think why would a guy that gets on there thinks that's gonna be also do, th- does that really get someone off just jerking off to people ch- talking I think it's Someone's like jerking the, off I right now like to the, the podcast, the, by the, the way. The, Someone just came right as I said that. Someone's like, yes! Yeah. Yes! Oh, no. Of course. I think it's the exhibitionist like thing of it, right? It's like yeah. the thrill of like some stranger that didn't plan on seeing my dick is going to see it now. That's a weird... I don't know. I can't really get there. No, I nor can understand, I, nor can I. I understand people <laughs> fucking in public because they think yeah. that's hot, like hiding it, you know? Like if you were with your girl or something, you guys are like hooking up in public. Uh, public hookups, I understand the mentality because it's like, we're being bad. What if right. we get caught together? Caught? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like both of you are sharing that kind of, you know, that anxiety. Yeah. But solo is so sad. It's very sad. Yeah, I like mean, that. Like, like, sad, like yeah. a guy is like jerking off outside of a grocery store, and you're like, "What, buddy?" It's just gross, man. It's so sad. It's just not. So all those guys out there who jerk off on <laughs> Omegle, please cut it out. Please stop. Please cut stop. it out. I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, if you stop because you really get would. it probably the most because yeah. you're on there for hours and hours. There's got to be. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing because it used to just be just guys jerking off you know like that's why i I never wanted to do it people would there have been you know content creators who make things on omegle right you know for years before me uh because it's just a good way to sort of source strangers sure but um but it used to just be so much of that and and now there's like pretty good filters and you type in interest tags so you can say like music or youtube or whatever Ah. whatever tiktok and so uh it does an incredibly good job of of of, uh censoring most of the dicks most of the dicks most of the dicks that's how some of them will get in there you know that's my uh, album next album is censored most of the dicks (laughs) censoring most of the dicks who's which one's better for you to pick up people off the street venice or new york when when you do venice uh, when you're out here on the beach is it the beach or new york what has what has better source material for you uh, that's a great question, man. I think honestly, New York is more exciting because it's New York. Um, yeah. but uh, Venice is a great place to make man. On There's the a lot of content. wild shit over there. It's already so lawless and crazy and and, and yeah. wild. You know, it feels like a different country over there. Feels like Portland. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's like Portland. It's like beach. Portland, if you will. Yeah, 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 lawless and insane. Yeah, yeah. There's no cops over there. You can people can do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. I mean, I remember going to Venice for the first time when I moved here. I was like. 
this is just like a free fucking landscape for homeless people to just live this wild fun life yeah and then it kind of got restrictive and now it's there's no rules no i mean i, I don't know if i'd go there now if i was you it's a yeah, little nuts it's, it's different now it's gotten nuts. It's different now yeah. yeah um i remember being so excited by venice when i came down here to go to college and as a freshman we took it we just like you know took a ride out there to check it out yeah and just the fact that like it smelled like weed everywhere yeah it does. and there were weed dispensaries and like at that time, and that was like my first time like being like, oh shit, like I could walk it. They, they got a weed doctor here. Like right. I could try to like weed say doctor. I have back pain and then right. maybe I could like legally buy some weed, you know, yeah, like from, from a guy in cargo shorts and Tiva sandals. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah. you're a doctor? Yeah. He's yeah. like, am I, dude? Who knows? Who cares? Oh, dude, yeah. The, when I finally did get the, the weed card or whatever for the first time. I got it, that thing. It looked like the guy, because that was back in the day. Like now it's recreational and it's, yeah. it's fucking everywhere and it's, you know, everyone's buying it, but Back in the day, it was like you had to see the doctor. Yeah. But the guy, it looked like a Halloween costume. Like It was, it was the funniest thing. It was total bullshit. It just looked with the stethoscope and shit <laughs> and like a, a, a yoga ball in the corner. Yeah. Like he's all about fitness, you know? Yeah. How's your core? You're like, just give me the weed, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me the fucking weed, man. Yeah. And it was check boxes by various conditions that would warrant, you know, you getting the weed. So you just pick one, sure. you know? I can't sleep that well. Like, but know. I don't like weed nowadays as much because it's um insane. Right, <laughs> I, it's like I smoke weed today, and I'm just like, I, this was never what it was. Too strong. This is very old man bullshit. But like, mm. like, oh, you know, oh yeah, complain. But truly, you could smoke a joint with some friends and and be fine. And like, yeah, no, yeah. it's I, if I take more than two or three hits, I'm like, this is absurd. I'm so, so high. Yeah, way too high to function. Yeah, yeah. Me yeah. and Dave, when we were like the third or fourth time that me and little Dicky had dinner together before when we were talking about the show. Yeah. We went out to a restaurant near his place and we got stoned. Yeah. And dinner was tough. Right. <laughs> because we were talking, we were having a good time, but yeah. there was moments at dinner where you're like, fuck, I'm so high. Right. Like, I'm so fucking high. Yeah. And we were both in that same state where we were like, man, we shouldn't have smoked that whole joint. Right. We could have shared a small amount, but we right. both were sitting on the patio talking. Yeah. At his house, so we just were having a good time because sure. we got along. So we kept sharing and forgetting the idea that, like, it's not what it was. No, and, like, the fact that, like, a single joint is enough to just, like, destroy two, like, <laughs> adults. Adult men, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's kind who, of, who, kind of who, crazy. who had smoked? I had smoked for 20 years at one point. Right. You know, I started smoking weed when I was, like, 15 or 16. I'm not... Yeah. Not saying you should, kids, but no, also no. I, that's when I started when I was in high school. Yeah, same here. And I had smoked forever, and yeah. so like now it's like oh, I can get my talents back. It's no chance. Dude. Yeah, I think that's part of what happened to me, and, and part of what contributed to me just being like, "Oh fuck this, I, I can't hang anymore." Did you have like you a? Know? Did you have one of those nights where it was like, "Am I gonna die?" Ba yeah, I, I had several bad trips along the. Usually from edibles, you know. Oh my god, dude! Never again. Oh, dude, edibles are, are fucking scary. Hashtag never again with yeah, these fucking things. Because you can get such a high concentration of of. THC in there yeah. way more than it would ever be feasible for one human to smoke. Like yeah, you'd you have don't to sit need there that. and face a hundred blunts in a row in an hour to Why? get the equivalent level. So you just end up in the fetal position, like in your bed with the lights off, just like when does it end? Pacing. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I usually yeah, walk. I, yeah. I go for like a long fucking walk. I'm like, get out of my system. Get out of my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I, what I'm actually doing is moving it faster through my blood, so it's making right. me even higher. You're hyping which it is up. Fucking insane. Oh Jesus. So are you on tour right now? What's going on? Uh, how, how no, many? we're no. back home from tour. Okay, um, good. We have some 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 one off shows coming up. Uh, we're doing a festival called Same Same But Different. Same, is, same, but different. Where is that? Is that in LA? It's in SoCal. It's about an hour outside of LA. I'm forgetting the exact name of the place where it is. Same, same. Look, same, same, but different is the festival that he's going to... When are you going to be there? Uh, also a great question. Let me see. Same, Let's same. See. I'm going to look it up. <laughs> Yeah, same, yeah. same, but different. Look at this. I've never uh, heard of this in my life. Uh, it's dope. There's a lot of like funk bands uh, that are going to be playing. And they Volpec's call it SSBD. 77 Days. September days. 9th through 11th. There it is. That's when it is. Man, you're going to do it on September 11th? Jesus I think fucking I, Christ. Yeah, I think I actually am. Never forget the date. 9-11. Uh, <laughs> That's right. He's going to be doing it on 9-11, the same, same, but different. Go out and check that out. Yes. Dude, there's yoga and mindfulness. There's educational workshops, live painting, arts yeah. and crafts, late night beach parties, swimming, waterside camping. Uh, what does this say? It's how did vibe. Uh, there's there's uh, lessons on how to decapitate a body? No. Um, <laughs> that's right how to I, bury a, a full-size adult male you uh, never know what <laughs> skills will be applicable in the future but so. this looks cool and then chrome chromeo is going to be yeah, there chromeo is going to be uh, there that's wild this is very cool so go check out same same but different but also um plug your website which are the website so people can come yes see you. yes uh harry dot com Harry Mac official and go watch any and all of the videos that you can find uh, of the H Mac on the YouTube's. Yes, uh, we'll put them in the description 
you can click on some of our favorites here uh, at the Whisk Ginge family. Hell I appreciate yeah. you being here, dude. Um, this this was wonderful. I wanted to learn so more fun. about you. Yes. I got to know. I want to come see you do your thing live. I would love that, man. Yeah, yes. maybe I'll come yes. out to Same Same But Different and go learn how to bury a body and do yoga. Please, I would maybe. love that. All I would right. love to have that experience with you. It's not that far away, so maybe I'll get out there. <laughs> we end the show the same way. Look at that camera right there. Yes. And uh, you say one word or one phrase to end the episode. I used to do one word. Some people freak out. They're like, I don't know a word. So you could do a word or a phrase. But remember, this is cemented in time forever. There's going to be a vault of these last word or phrases. Oh, my God. And this will be H Max. So when you're ready. Escalator. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.